I've got Jesse here helping me with Q&A and we are going to hop into technical services momentarily. I will start sharing my screen so you'll have something to look at and I guess I could start my video so you can also have something to look at. Um, but I'm over here on the Bywater Solutions web page and we actually have a great resource for y'all. Um, let me do this to everybody. This upgrade note page is where we're trying to house as much information as we can. So you have, it's a one-stop shop, but we have, you know, the release notes. So from the COA community, the release notes, the um, manual, the schema, which, I'll, which is, has a brand new look, um, all the blog posts that we've created thus far for our 1811, um, upgrade coming up. All our recorded webinar sessions as of um, last week on the 8th was our last one. We also have the Q&A from all the upgrade webinars thus far. So we've answered all the questions and put them here. And then we also highlight all the, um, the kind of enhancements and features below. One more place I wanted to pop over to, and I've just momentarily lost my train of thought as things are popping up on my screen. Um, cancel, cancel, cancel. I can't even remember where I was gonna go. Oh well, it will, it will come to me. So welcome today, it is Technical Services, the 1811 um, Koha webinar. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for taking some time out of everybody's hectic day to join us. Again, um, my name is Kelly. I'm one of the educators here. I've been thinking about this. I've been doing these upgrade webinars for quite a few versions now, and I still get kind of scared um, of y'all asking great questions. But I have Jessie, um, who is my BFF, and she's here to help me answer any questions, and we may pop in, um, Andrew may pop in as well. So, hi, Jessie. Good morning. <laughs> morning for everyone if this is your first webinar you are not able to talk i'm really sorry um, but we do have a q a box that if you ask any questions we're happy to help um, answer those as well as a chat box so we love the q a because it houses those questions and everyone can see them but we also have the chat box that you can use um, as i was saying this is this is our upgrade note page which you can a lot of the information is, is living here for 1811. Biggest question of the day, when do I get upgraded to 1811? That is gonna happen in June. June is the month of upgrades. So we will start in June. If y'all, is this, if this is your first time um, getting upgraded on your staff client, you will get a red box over here where your news section is and it will tell you about a week before that you are gonna get upgraded. The only thing you have to do is clear your cash that that Monday morning when you walk in or Sunday if you're in on a weekend. Um, so just remember, clear your cash and you're good to go on all your Koha um, computers. Let's see, showed you our upgrade note page. So we're good there. And without further ado, we have about 23 people. So this is exciting. We are going to do technical services. Um, this is probably the most fun you'll have all day, I'm sure, is, is learning all the new features of technical services. We're gonna start in acquisitions. Um, I hope a lot of people are using our acquisitions, and if you're not, then this will give you a, a little um, kind of insight into how this module works, because there is a lot in this module that has some features and enhancements. Um, I also wanted to remind you, if you did not know, there is an agenda for our upgrade webinars. Those can be found on our webinar registration page, which y'all had to have gotten to, so we'll register for this. But that, will, that has an agenda, and I, I promise I will try to stick to it as much as I can. Um, but that gives you a nice summary of all the bugs that we are going to talk about today. And if you wanted to have more information, you, they're linking right to that Bugzilla to talk more about um, what the developers had to say about that. So that's really exciting. Now, this is a test site, so we don't have a ton of funds, but this is my acquisition page. You can see I have, you know, my fiscal year of 2019. I have two funds. One of the um, 
kind of visual enhancements of the acquisition module is just the way that the basket information has been reformatted. So I'm going to pop over to a basket. And I can tell you, um, new basket. Let's say, let's call this spring fever. Everything is kind of stayed the same on this page, but it is actually going to be that um, that top feature. It's just a little bit cleaner, I think. So just a little cleaner. I think they're trying to slim us down a little bit on this view of the basket. Another thing that um, has the so much power, I just love that Koha is becoming so powerful for the user. You have another way to um, configure what you see in your um, basket. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add something to my basket. Let's grab a, um, a book, cat. I've literally no thoughts when I have to do this. I just could not give you an example of that something more unique. Oh, cat versus cat. Obviously, that's the best book to get. Keeping peace when you have more than one cat. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this. I've get lots of messages here. Okay, let's go ahead and add this item. I'm gonna select a fund, really only have two funds. I'm gonna pick my youth fund. We have a lot to do in acquisitions, but I'm going to show you just um, how you can configure your columns first, and then we'll go into more about our accounting details. Okay, so you can see the columns that I see, order, RRP tax, ECOS, total, fund, supplier report, modify, cancel order. So let's go over, and I'm gonna open a new tab. As everyone knows, I am in a support group for my tabs. Look, I only have four today, so I, it must be working. Tab hoarders are us. We're going to go over to our administration module, and under here in additional parameters, we have this feature called config columns. I can say in pretty much every release, we've added the ability to configure another set of columns that you can see on your staff client and the OPAC, which is amazing. So in this top one I have acquisitions and now I have a basket. So I can tell what is hidden or what can be seen. So I kind of want to see the basket number and I'd like to see the quantity probably. <laughs> Somebody went a little crazy in what everyone can see. So let's do this and then I hit save. So I'm now revealing a few more columns that should show on my basket. I'm gonna head back over to my tab. I'll refresh this page. Now I can see there's my, um, my line number. I can't remember what that one is. Um, I can see my order, there's my quantity, and there's a few more columns. So you can decide what you're going to see on a day-to-day -day basis, what works for your library a lot easier now. If you want to get rid of some of these columns that you're like, they don't mean anything to me, they're kind of a hassle to see there, then you can certainly do that. Now, another thing that you'll be seeing on a lot of the pages within Koha is this kind of gray bar that allows you to search, go to the next page, show as many entries, and then you also have this column visibility as well. Now, this is just going to be that one time that you're looking at this view, the configure columns is more of a permanent until you go in and change those configure columns. So super, super awesome. Okay, we also have the ability to duplicate existing order lines to a given basket. So I know that maybe I've ordered this two weeks ago, oh, funny story, I was in a bookstore yesterday and I had a book and um, this, these two ladies came over and they're like, where did you get that book? Because I really want that book. And I'm like, oh, this was on display. And um, I said, but maybe it's in the, another section. So we went and I had the last copy. I felt really bad, um, but I didn't give it to her. I kept it for myself. But the bookseller was like, we are going to have to buy some more. 
So she may have already created a basket in Koha and ordered five copies, but with our whole conversation yesterday, maybe she wanted to add some more. So what you're going to do is you're going to be able to um, add an order to a basket from an existing order. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add to basket here. And then I have, a, we have a couple more options in add to basket, but I'm going to show you right now this from existing orders. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Or I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to click it. There we go. Then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have the ability to look for title, ISBN, if I know the vendor, if I know the basket, um, for that order that I know is already in acquisitions. So I think I did this this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and search. This is the book I had in my hand. So here we go. This is um, the order. I have this little um, next button. I'm going to pick the one that I'm going to choose because you can imagine you can have a couple different if you put a very vague title in you're searching, uh, you know, have quite a few um, options there. You're going to pick which one you're going to duplicate. Then you're going to say, hey, yep, it's coming from the same fund that I ordered it the first time. I could change funds if I wanted to, but I'm going to say, nope, use that same funds. If I had an internal note, a vendor note, or I was using statistics, oops, let's use the same currency. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the order. Super easy. Koa is going to grab all that information. Then it's going to show me a little snapshot of what I've just done. And then I can go, yep, that's correct. Return back to my basket and it will be added there to my spring fever basket. So that is really cool so many less clicks don't you think eee! i'm sure you all want to just jump up and jump up and down okay i'm jumping up and down oh are you good good yeah. another new thing adding to a basket i told you there was more options than normal so let's go ahead and add to a basket this is my favorite one thank you nick thank you thank you nick i can say from a new file here so prior to 1811, I had to stage my file in tools, then go to acquisition. Now I can do it all right from acquisition. I have a basket. I'm going to add to the basket. I'm going to say from a new file. I'm going to grab a file from my desktop. It brings me to tools, but I don't have to do that myself. Koha is doing it for me. Um, I really... It's not scan. It's not like, there we go. It's like not. I cleaned up my desktop really well, so well that, you know, maybe I've lost a um, mark file. Documents. Do, do, do mark file there. Whew. Got one. Upload that file. Pick my, pick my options like I would do in tools. Not going to really do much here. Stage for import. Oh, it's waiting. Okay. Add these stage files to the basket. And that is amazing. <gasps> there we go. It's there. This is probably my favorite enhancement of 1811 for acquisitions. This is a huge time saver. I think it's my favorite too. I don't know why, but I just think that like, it just felt like you were doing a lot of clicking to take a file and add it to acquisition. So Jesse and I, we, that's why we're BFFs because we're, we have the same love and acquisition. <laughs> okay. A, now that you, you have to calm yourself back down, get, get your heart rate back, because I got another one to show you. We are now going to have separate replacement cost and retail cost fields in acquisition. Now we always had a replacement cost and we always had a retail price cost fields, but now they're separate. Um, so this is going to make it that they're independent while you're ordering and while you're receiving, that they're going to remain separate. Really exciting. So let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to pop over to the, um, oops, I popped, I popped to the wrong place. Let's pop back. 
I'm going to go to modify on this one item that I've already put in my basket. So under accounting details, I always had all these fields, but now they're, they're, they're pulling them out separately. So when you do the ordering and you're the receiving, it's clearly defined your, that replacement price and that retail price. So you have the vendor price. If I added that vendor price of $25, all those fields are going to populate. Now, if I said my vendor price was $25, but I'm going to make my replacement cost $30. So now still budgeted costs, that's how much I'm paying. Um, that's how much I'm taking out of the budget is 25, but that replacement cost is 30. So let's go ahead and save that. Maybe. Getting a little. I'm this little pointer. He's pointing. He's not doing anything, but he's pointing. There we go. I should clean my dog. Okay, so now let's go ahead and close this basket. And I'll receive that book. Okay. Or in that same vendor, I'll receive my shipment. Next button. Okay, let's go find that book. There it is, the form. Let's receive this. Oh, I should show something really quick before, while I'm here. While I'm here, I can show you one other thing that's that's new is you actually have this always this more column was kind of always there, but you had mark and you had card, but now you have this order option. If I hit that order, I'm actually going to see who placed that order um, in the basket. So it does give you the ability to see who placed that order um, in that acquisition basket. Okay. You also will see who placed that order when you receive the item. So you can see it here. That's who I'm logged in at, so that's what will show there. Okay, so now you can see over here, retail price is there. The replacement price I can edit here, and the actual cost I can edit here. So nothing's really changed. Um, you always had the ability to change the actual cost. I don't believe you could change the replacement cost in this feature um, prior to 1811. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. There it is, let's finish receiving. Then we'll pop over to that record and see the, um, the item itself. You can see there it is. There's that other one that I duplicated. Remember, I duplicated it. Let's go ahead and edit this one. Maybe edit this one. There it is. So I can see there's my purchase price and there's my replacement price. So that's great. That's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna pop back over to this acquisition detail. I'm gonna go back to my invoice because I may have, um, I might have made a mistake in the invoice. With 1811, you now can make adjustments to your invoices. <gasps> this is so exciting. So I'm in my invoice right now and I realized, oh my goodness, I said that it cost $25, but it actually cost $27. I don't know what I was doing. I have to fix this. Prior to 1811, I don't even know how people did this. I don't know how they edited their invoices, but now you can do and add an adjustment. So here I am, I'm in my invoice. 
and I can add an adjustment here. I can either do a positive or a negative. So if I wanted to add money in my case, I'm going to add $2, but I could also remove um, money if I realized that I, I did it wrong as well in the negative. Add an adjustment. I can add the amount $2. Now here, the reasons are a drop down menu that can be set up in your authorized values. You can choose what reasons are displayed here. So again, this is something your library can determine um, what they would like to have as reasons. You can also see I have a note field, so I can also put my initials in addition to that um, reason. So let me pop over to my authorized values and show you where you can set that up. It's called a j reason. So admin module, authorized values. I think it's the first one. It is the first one, I just reason. So here I just created some um, library mistake processing. So if you wanted to add some processing fees to your invoice, you can do that. Vendor discount, vendor mistake. Again, you can create any one um, you want. And Jesse has put in a link to the video that she and I did about this as well. So I'm gonna say, oops, it was my mistake, Kelly. Make sure that fund is the same. I can encumber while the invoice is open to show that and then update adjustments. Okay, so now you can see here on the invoice details, I have this total with the adjustment. So now it's showing as $27. So amazing, like just full on amazing that you can do that, positives or negatives. I know people are like waving their hands like, whoa, maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's go back to my Bear Pond Books vendor. Let's look at some baskets. I think I created one earlier. My youth basket, so let's go ahead and view that. We always have the ability to add internal notes and vendor notes when we're placing orders. Now, if you add an internal note, you get a pop-up as opposed to it being a, a text in the actual, on the actual page. So you have the ability to add this um, internal note, but now it's just a pop-up. Still displays here. And there you go. So that's new. That's really fun. Okay, so we showed you the order lines creator um, earlier, but that was probably on your agenda afterwards. Did adjustments. So exciting, the adjustments. I'm going to close this basket, and we are actually going to see our internal notes when we receive the item as well. So at some point during um, the acquisition process, those notes couldn't be seen in the receiving. And what we put there is kind of important and we want that to be seen throughout the whole process. So let's go ahead and receive another shipment from Bear Pond Books. Very busy with the mail today. I don't believe May is like halfway over. I keep on thinking that. There must be a mistake somewhere along the way. I know, we're already mid-May. Oh, it's crazy. Okay, there's that notebook. Received. Okay, and there's my internal note. So that is new too. So it's just great just having that consistency throughout the acquisition process and so many of these features. I just love how they're all working together. Okay, I mean, how happy are acquisitions people right now? They're probably just jumping up and down. We are now going to float over to our serials module and show a few things on um, the serials module. One being the ability to um, add several 
receipts for a given subscription. Now, I really, I had to read this a few times, but I, I kind of understand where it's coming from. And it may be something that libraries are, are going to embrace, or it might be just too many steps. But you can now, um, prior to 1811, you could put in a subscription and say, it cost me $200 for this subscription. And um, put it in every year and, and receive it. Now, with this new feature, you can actually put in per issue amount versus saying that this subscription costs this much. If you do it a per issue amount, you can actually receive five at a time um, and have that recorded as such. So let's go through that process. Um, let's go back to my acquisition home. Let's go into my um, nope. blah blah. There we go. Search. I think I created one. Bum, 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 bum. I think I was creating one. Now, serials. Again, I'm very creative when I do baskets names. My creativity just oozes from me. Now I have add to basket. Now I have this from a subscription. I'm going to go ahead and search for a subscription that I have within my serials module. So I have here, yeah, let's place this order. Now, under accounting details, you can see my quantity. So it's actually telling me you have this subscription set up that it comes one out of three months. So it's a quarterly mag magazine and I have a sub my ex subscription details is saying that I've, I'm paying for up to 60 months. So I could actually put in that I'm going to order 60 of those. And let's say the vendor price is $15. I don't even know, $900? But it's, I'm able to say how much a single subscription, one single magazine is in the scheme of things. So this is my um, three year plan with this magazine, if I'm doing my math correctly. I'll go ahead and save that. 15, but this is a really nice nature quarterly magazine. If you've never seen it, it's great. So probably it does cost $15. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, close this basket and receive. But I'm only gonna receive maybe a year's worth. Receive my shipment. Positions is so fun. Let's go ahead and hit receive. Quantity ordered, quantity received. So I'm going to go ahead and say I only received my first year, which should be a four. Go ahead and hit save. This is also going to reflect in your subscription module, so that's really cool too. So let's go ahead and hit save. So you can see that's my price, what I'm going to pay out of my budget currently because they're $15 and I'm ordering, I'm receiving just four of those. Okay, so there we go. So let me go over to my Orion magazine. You go to my acquisition details. You can see there it is. Oops, that was this one. I did it this morning too. That it is, um, I received four at this point. Now let's pop over to the subscription tab. I have this acqu acquisition detail tab as well. So you can see here, um, I have, let's do, there it goes. There's my cereals basket. I received 
quarters one through four on this date, I got received four and that was how much I spent. So it's really getting this whole like specific amounts of your budget for those cereals. So just the ability to allow several receipts for a given subscription is a feature that you may start to realize that this will be really helpful for your acquisition module working with your um, cereals module. So I really like that. This is great when you have to set up several subscriptions. This is a nice, this is a nice enhancement. I like it too. Yeah. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. You also now have the, um, let me go to my information, go back to my Biblio Orion. Under your acquisition details, you have a few more, you have at least one more column. You have the subscription call number added to your acquisition detail um, grid as well from the subscription module. You also have a subscription link. So from here, you can go right to that subscription in your subscription module. So both those columns are new. That's pretty cool, right? Now, there is a, um, another, in the admin module webinar, we talk about permissions and how they've gotten pretty granular in the admin portion, but we actually also added a new permission for suggestions. So prior to 1811, you actually had to have like manage budgets as a permission so you could actually manage subscriptions. And now actually you have the ability to just um, give a staff member um, the manage suggestions option. So again, another great way to make sure your permissions are set up correctly for um, staff members and giving them exactly what they need. So I, I love more permissions. I mean, it's not always easy to look at the whole page, but at least you know that you have the ability to adjust those. Go here, I just want to show you set permissions. So this permissions are set up through your patrons. So you have the manage purchase suggestions options now for your for your staff members. So that's great. I'm so happy to see that. You also have the ability to manage currencies and exchange rates. That's a new permission as well. So this may be helpful to um, a library that does do a lot of their currency and exchange rates. And so now there is a separate permission. Again, remember admin um, got a lot of permissions this 1811 as well, because it, real, it was realized that there are a ton of things people can do if you give them admin privileges. And so it was broken out. Currencies and exchange rates, rates live in the admin module. However, it, it kind of goes in hands in hands with acquisition, so you'll find that here. Now, cataloging. I know all you catalogers are patiently waiting. Um, Jesse and I also did a video on this, but there is a new way to configure the columns when you're doing a Z39.50 search. <gasps> Remember when you used to catalog, you only got to see like title. Um, what else did you get to see? ISBN. Um, you had very few options when you did a search in Z39.50, what you got to see about those records before you had to pop into Mark. Um, so let's go ahead. I'll show you in the Koha administration module, you have a new system preference and it's called additional fields. We had a great um, fun, was it technical services? Um, last time because we I had a question, what was the longest system preference? Um, and actually somebody guessed it right. It, the system preference has 50 characters in it. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I mean, we're getting close in a lot of these. So now you can display specific mark fields when you're doing a Z39.50 search. So when Jesse and I did this video, we talked about like what other fields would be helpful. Um, we thought possibly seeing the H. So if libraries are using that as the medium, so we know if it's a sound recording or if it's a DVD, 
We also thought maybe seeing the RDA, 336, 337, 338 fields. And then what we were really focusing in sometimes is that you don't know an overdrive or an electronic record over a regular print record when you're doing Z39.50 as well. So we did some search and it looks like a lot of sometimes information from overdrive is stored in the 037B. So we added that as well. So get, this is exciting. So let's go and do some cataloging using our Z39.50 search. I'm going to pop over to my cataloging module. You can raise your hand if you use Z39.50. That is um, how, oh, there we go. Yeah. So this is exciting. If anything, oh, look at everybody. Yay. Um, if there's anything out there that you um, use, okay, let's do the farm because this is um, on my brain. Go ahead and search. Which let me tell you, it's a great book. I only have two targets. Did I hit search? Maybe I didn't hit search. Actually, I don't know, Jesse. This is probably like my first favorite, and then maybe adding stage files is my second favorite because I forgot about this one. This is exciting. This is an exciting one. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So you can see there's my additional fields. You can put as many as you want. You can see how it's they're bolding what fields you have. So I'm going to make this really big. So there's my 245H. Um, it seems weird I'm getting weird results, so I apologize for that. But at least I can tell. Let's see if we can find a, um, we don't have anything. That, oh, there it is. I don't think that's, that means anything, DLC. But still image, well, I'm not going to pick that one. I'm looking for the book. This one says audio disc. So the fact that you have the ability to choose what other fields you see is great because we all know that you have to look at the MARC records um, occasionally and you are looking for specific things in your records as all catalogers do, but it's great to kind of get a lot of information at one time and then maybe you only have to look at two mark records to decide which one you're bringing over versus five because you're not sure which one's the overdrive or which one's the electronic resource. So pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So that is a system preference that you go in and put those mark fields and then go to town and um, look for your records using Z39. I did put the link, Kelly, in there for the blog post and video. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we actually just did a video this morning on this new feature. Um, how many of y'all are using the advanced editor? So if you're using the advanced editor, give it a woo woo. Um, it's, it's super fun. Now, I feel like with every it's Koha upgrade, um, we are adding more functionality with that advanced editor. And this is one that um, lets you add a auto incremented control number in the 001 field for your records. So Jesse and I were talking this morning about what kind of libraries may use this. We talked about maybe equipment. So if you were um, cataloging, you know, laptops, projectors, scanners, and you barcoded them, but you also wanted to number them in a sequence for other reporting features, that you can now do that and have an auto incrementing number on your um, record. So one of the first things you need to do is you need to set up this authorized value um, of where you want the numbering pattern to start. So it is a drop down menu. So it's in your authorized values in administration. And this one is called control num sequence. So let's go ahead and show that category control num sequence. I'm going to do equipment like we did this morning, Jesse. So we have created one that this one, if we wanted to choose this authorized value um, numbering sequence, it would go BWS 007 and on and on and on. We can add a new control num sequence. So you could have multiple for different reasons. 
the authorized value is actually going to be the number of which you want to start the, um, the numbering sequence on. Description, let's do equipment, because that's what we thought of this morning. And go ahead and hit save. Yes, Marcia, it is, it, it is, it, it is a, um, something that people like and some people don't. So I'm glad to see that we have two options for catalogers. Okay, so now that we've created that, now we're gonna go into cataloging and use that advanced editor. If you have the system preference enable advanced editor turned on, this will populate. If you don't and you want to use it, that is a system preference. Maybe Jesse could put the name of it in. Enable advanced editor, I think, is the whole thing, but I could be wrong. So here we go. Now, as I said, this control num sequence is for your 001. So I'm going to go ahead and add my 001. I'm going to tab. And now I get this little cool widget. And I have the ability to um, choose which control number sequence I want to use for this one. So let's go ahead and hit equipment and say assign next. There we go. If I wanted to, um, I hit that twice, so it went to 501. If I wanted to override and do a different number for whatever reason, I can easily go ahead and add whatever number I wanted to put into this um, record instead of using the next one. So really great, this will continue incrementing. If you needed to jump another 100 for another reason, you could go back into your control num sequence and change that authorized value. So this is great. We talked about what if libraries wanted to use this and they only use the basic editor. You could toggle back and forth just to use this feature itself. So that is something that is possible and Jesse and I showed that in our video. And we, you'll see that later this week. So this is a great feature. Um, and ironically, I just had a ticket from a special library asking how to add a unique number to the 001. And I was just so happy to say, you have that ability now. Woo! Okay, for all those catalogers out there that have always wanted to have some sort of information added to their record that they cataloged in the mark, today is your day. You now have the ability to store the bib records creator and the person that last modified it in the mark record. <gasps> We're going to pop over to those system preferences. Oops, I'm getting a little pop up. So we actually have, um, I want to say four system preferences for there, but if you type in mark field four, you'll get all four of them. So we have mark field for creator ID, so the um, who created it, their name, their modifier ID, and the modifier name. So this is allowing you to pick the mark field and the subfield that it lives in. So we have the 945 subfield A will store the borrower number of the person that created the record. The 945 B will store the name of the person that created it. We have the 945C of the borrower number of the person that modified the record, and then D for the, the name of the person that modified, modified it. They do have the little note on how to construct this, um, this field as well. So any mark field that you want, you can do that. Now remember, if that field is not showing up um, because it's not, um, visible in your frameworks, then you would just need to adjust that in your frameworks. But I will, I will show you what this looks like when I create a record. I'll just do a, a new um, default record. My mouse is like going, <laughs> I'm not Marsha. I don't like the advanced editor. I'm going to switch over to the basic editor. I cataloged in my public library with the basic editor, so I feel most comfortable. And I know there are librarians who um, use the um, OCLC cataloging and, and 
so the advanced editor would be more their speed, but it really is not my speed. Just gonna hit those key um, fields. I don't need to add the item information as this is just going to show up in your bib record. So there is our 945. I am borrower 40, 54. So there's my um, borrower number. There is my name. As you can see up here, it says BWS support. There is, I'm the only one who, have, who has touched this. So it will repeat that, that I've modified it. And then if um, Andrew went in and modified it, then he would get, that would update with his borrower number and um, name in the C and D. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think that's amazing. So that is a system preference. You set up the mark fields and you determine what subfields that shows up in. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, next we're gonna pop over to the batch item modification tool, which now has a column for holds. And this was sponsored by the Carnegie Scout Public Library. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to run this report. Andrew is our report guru in the education team. Thank you, Andrew. So I'm going to, he just created a report so I could see something that had holds. I'm going to pop over to my batch modify tool, which you can do if you have item number in your report. And you now have a column for holds, which is great. So if you ever want to know um, if this, these items have any holds, you can see that here. No holds at this, on this item, but there are holds on the record. So we have a little pop-up. Um, a little like, what are those called? Tips. It tells you the holds. So that's pretty cool. Now, for anyone who loves mark modification templates, there is a new feature. And this does not say, but there is a library that sponsored it. And I think that's on the agenda. So um, I want to say it was, I, I don't want to say because I may have it wrong but this was something else that was sponsored by a library, to add a new option in mark modification templates. And this is one tool that I always forget is a tool. I wanna to go into admin. So we have our mark modification templates. Prior to 1811, um, we will, let's go edit items, edit actions, apologize. We had Prior to 1811, we had update existing or add new. Now you have, in addition to update existing or add new, you have add new. So you don't actually have to um, update the existing if you actually just want to create a new field. So this was a new option that has been added to your mark modification templates. It's pretty cool. Now, don't do what I did, though. I forgot that this was a new feature, and I just, when I created the item information, I did add new, add new, add new to my three rules, actions, and I got three items with those three rules. So once you do the 952 once, then you would update and say 952Y for this, 952A for that. Even I get messed up a lot if you ask anybody. Okay. There is now, and this we're going to create into a blog post because it's, it's quite detail oriented, but to sum it up, what I want to say is there is a new ability to um, split your call numbers when printing. I can think of probably everyone in this room has that one odd call number that they want to say this is a ref or, um, but there are, but there are, Library of Congress. So if they add that ref in front of their call number, then when they run and create a label for that, it will actually think the ref is the beginning part of the LC and it will split it wrong. Um, now there is the ability to tell Koha how to actually split 
the call number so it prints correctly. <gasps> amazing, amazing. So let me pull up. I have this. Um, bum, 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 bum. So for my example, I created a label batch and put this label in there. So I have this ref and really ref is outside of that LC number. This is an addition on what I'm adding. So I don't want it to split on the period. I want it to split as an LC number with the ref in addition to it. So you now can do that with a little power of regex. Don't be scared. Regex is not for everyone, but there are people in Bywater that can certainly help you with any regex needs that you have. So the ability to configure the splitting of your call numbers is going to live in administration. However, you know labels kind of go hand in hand with um, technical services. So let's go ahead and grab that classification source option in cataloging. And we have the um, your classification sources. And now we have a way to add a splitting rule, which will change your world if you need to modify how it splits when you're printing labels. So we created one here, splits under um, using a regular expression. Here's our regex. You can have multiple splitting rules, so you could create a new splitting rule if you wanted. I'll show you what the one that we created to demonstrate with that ref example. There's a description, the splitting routine, regex, and then there is the, reg the regex expression, and that just blows my mind. So I can tell you right now, it's not my forte, but we can certainly help you if you give us um, something you need to work with for your labels. Now, what I love, 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 is you can test what you've created before you print it. So we have the ability to test it. So let's grab this call number. And we want to see how, if the regex that Andrew, thank you, Andrew, has created will split the call number correctly. So yeah, that's exactly how I wanted to split. I wanted to take the ref and separate it out from the LC number, but I wanted to split correctly. So that is the better way to split the actual call number, adding that ref on top. So this reg regular expression in its own special way tells it how to do that. And again, we will certainly help you um, with that to make sure that it can create what you want. So this is just one example. I know that a lot of libraries have kind of um, odd call numbers for their, their sorting, but they still want them to print correctly. So this is a great way to do that. Okay. Oh, I missed one. I missed something in serials. I apologize. It was way down at the bottom. We have one more thing to show you in serials. There is now the ability to receive, um, to set the receive day on receiving multiple receive serials. So this is great. This is amazing. Let's pop over to serials. Okay, so let's look at our Atlantic Monthly. Did I spell that right? So let's go serial receive. And I have this button that says multi receiving. So then it will say, how many issues do you want to receive? And then if I wanted to set the date to today. So that's really awesome. Like I'm going to receive all three of them. And I could say that, or I could say not, and it would set the date to what it, I should have received it at, which is probably what most libraries wanted to do. Go ahead and receive those. Arrived, 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 the date that Koha thought they were arrived, and they've just sat on my desk for a really long time. <laughs> and I forgot to receive them. So that's super fabulous. So very, lots of less clicks, I wanna say, in technical services. You're, you're going to be clickless pretty soon. I'm just kidding. You're not gonna be able to be clickless, but 
It's streamlining your workflow, hopefully, in one of these new features or enhancements um, that you will see in June. That sums up my technical services agenda. Um, do we have any questions? I cannot believe we've been quite quiet, but again, the question and answer box is great. If you have a question, you have three amazing experts on Technical Services 1811 with you today, the dream team. And well, no, I mean Donna too, but she's on off training this week. Does anyone wanna say what their favorite new feature is? Oh, the Z39. <laughs> Jesse, I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess I like the Z39. Yeah. If you set up the, I have a question. If you set up the 001 control number sequence feature, will it replace a control number already existing in the mark that you import? Ooh, good question. What do you think it will do? We'll have to test that. It's not that automated. Um, so the, the 001 control number sequence only gets used if you're making a record or editing a record in the advanced editor. And it only gets used if you click the little button that says assign the next number. Okay. Okay, so you could retain it. Could you do a second 001, do you think? No, it's not repeatable. So it, anything you, you import will keep it 001 unless you go in there and replace it. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. See, I told you, you all have the dream team. Oh, we got lots of splitting, call number splitters. That's exciting. That will be a blog post very soon. That will be something we will do. And we'll, maybe we'll have a few examples. Oh, yes, Mar Marshall likes the additions to the mark modification template. Yep, that's great. That's really great. Um, any other questions? I actually just had a, a Zoom with a partner and he started talking about Game of Thrones with me and I was like, slow down, buddy. I didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, so funny. Y'all are great. Well, we, we have um, two more upgrade webinars this week, and then we round it out with, a, you know, we, this is our finale week. We're going into the, long, the home stretch. We have an admin and a OPAC upgrade webinar that I hope that you all can attend. And again, I know time is precious for everybody, so I appreciate your time coming today. We like to try to give you as much bang for your buck, so hopefully you've got a lot of things to walk away with today in this hour. And again, um, you know, blog posts are there. There's video tutorials. You can rewatch the upgrade webinars. Um, and we certainly can take anybody's questions in tickets as we move forward into 1811. If you want to demo any of this, our Bywater um, website, you can actually go into um, the, the new version of 1811 is on our, is on our website. You go to the main page and you scroll way down, you can actually see the OPAC and the staff climate client in the 1811. Thank you everybody so much. I hope, I, again, I hope you, you learned something and you're excited about something coming up. And thank you, Jesse, and thank you, Andrew. Quiet bunch. Thank nice you. Nice job, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have